Welcome to this episode of the Operating System Development Series. Today, we will set up Grump, but before we start, I have some explaining to do. When you turn on your computer, the first thing that happens is that all the internal components get the necessary power to function. When power is all good, the processor starts executing code. The first thing that gets executed is a motherboard firmware, also known as the BIOS. The BIOS does some really important tasks. First of all, it resets and verifies all the internal components, and this step is called the POST, or the Power on Self Test. Secondly, the BIOS provides a basic interface between the operating system and the hardware. And the most important role, the BIOS looks for bootable devices, such as a hard disk, floppy disk or CD, and loads the first sector into memory, also known as the boot sector. Inside the boot sector, there is what we call the bootloader, the first major component of an operating system. After loading it, the BIOS executes the bootloader, and gives full control to the operating system. Since there is very limited space inside the boot sector, on a floppy only 512 bytes, there isn't enough room for a whole operating system to fit in that space. So this is why the bootloader exists, and its role is to load and execute the kernel. However, prior to executing the kernel, the bootloader also has to switch to 32-bit mode, because at startup, the computer works in 16-bit mode. Some bootloaders go as far as showing a menu for the user to choose which kernel to load. There is not enough room for all this functionality inside the boot sector, so usually the bootloaders are divided in two. The first part, or stage, loads the second one and executes it. The second stage then switches to the 32 or 64-bit mode, does hardware detections and loads the actual kernel. The kernel is the heart of all operating systems. The kernel does critical stuff on a computer, such as hardware input and output, memory managing, and task switching. It is a vital part of every operating system, yet it is so well hidden behind what is called the shell. The shell is the user interface of an operating system, and it is just a program, not the operating system itself. An operating system doesn't need a shell to function, the shell is like an add-on that enables interactivity between computers and humans. The drivers are another special type of programs, that enable the operating system, and every program to access hardware input or output. In our operating system, we will use an existing bootloader called Grump. We will not be creating our own bootloader, because it is a pretty difficult job, and it requires knowledge we don't have yet. Also bootloaders must be written in assembly, which is a very ugly and hard to understand programming language, and there can appear compatibility issues on various computers. So we will use Grump, because it was made by pros, and it probably overcame these issues already. To get Grump, we will open the web browser, and look it up online. The first search result should lead to the new website. Go to Downloads, and open the FTP link. Now look for the Grub 0.97 version, compiled for the i386 platform. The reason we are not getting the latest version is that this is the last compiled version of Grub Legacy. We will not be using Grub 2, since it is a totally different beast, it is harder to configure so we will stick to what is easier. Also, Grub2 needs to be compiled, since only the source code is available on the official website. After downloading finished, we can extract the files from the archive. And now it would be a good time to create a working directory. I will create a folder called MyOS, located in my documents. Now let's see what we have got here. Inside the Grub folder, there is a list of extension less files, all of them containing the stage word. What we need are the stage 1 and stage 2 files, so we will copy them in our work directory. Unless we will be booting from something other than a floppy, we won't need the other files, so they can be deleted. To set up Grub, we will need two floppy images. To create them, open the terminal, that would be SIGWIN inside Windows and we will use the dd command to generate two files, which will be our floppy images. First, I will navigate to the working directory, using the cd command. 
And now let's type the following command. DD, which is the name of the program, BS equals 512, which means that one sector has 512 bytes, COUNT equals 2880, which means that we will generate 2880 sectors. That totals to about 1.4 megabytes, which is the size of a standard floppy disk. The next parameter is, IF, equals, slash dim, slash zero, which means that, the input file is going to be just plain zeros, and, of, equals, the file name of our floppy image, which in my case will be my os.img. For the second floppy image, we will copy the same command, by pressing the up arrow key, and only change the output file to auxiliary.img. Now we need to put something on these floppies, because blank unformatted disks are useless. Let's start with my os.img. This image will contain the kernel, the bootloader, which in our case is grump, and other file that we will need in the future. So that the disk will be usable, we must format it using the FAT file system. We will use the mkfs.msdos command, specifying as parameter our floppy image. Now that the image can be read by operating systems, and we can put files on it, let's mount it. First, I will create a new directory inside the media folder, called floppy1. Linux users, note that you need administrator privileges to do this. In Debian-based distributions, you can do that by placing sudo in front of the command. Now we can mount the image in the newly created folder, so let's type mount, dash o, loop. The name of the floppy image, in our case, myos.img, and the folder, in my case, slash media, slash floppy1. If you are using Linux with a graphical user interface, you may see a new device appear on the desktop, or in the places menu. Nothing to worry about, should disappear after we unmount and remove the folder. Next, we will create a directory inside the floppy call boot. I will copy the two stage files inside this folder, using the cp command. We can use a trick to copy both the stage files at the same time, using a wildcard, that is a character which substitutes something else. The question mark means that in that position, there can be any symbol. A star means in that position, there can be any string of symbols. The destination will be the boot folder we just created. There is one more file we need to put on this floppy before we go on to the next one. So let's create a new empty text file called menu.cfg. This will be the configuration file for Grump. In the first line, let's type default 0. This means that Grump will boot the first entry in the menu by default, unless the user selects another one. Next. The timeout will be zero. For convenience, we don't want to get the option to boot another kernel, since we will only create one, and displaying a menu will cost us precious time. This command will make the waiting for user input time equal to zero seconds. Also I will enable hidden menu, so Grub won't display any menu at all. Now the next lines will define our first and only menu item. Let's give it the title MyOS. The root directory will be the path to the floppy drive, that is FT0 between parentheses. The kernel will be located in the root, and the file is called kernel.bin. The last instruction will be boot, this means that it will be booted automatically. Now we can save the file, and copy it in the same boot folder on the floppy image. We are done with this file, so we can unmount it, using the umount command. You can also delete the directory, so it won't show up on the desktop, on Linux computers. For the second image, we don't need to format it, since it is an auxiliary disk that we will only use once. Its purpose is to install grub on the first image. We will copy files directly to the disk, using the dd command. Let's start with stage 1, which has to be inside the boot sector of the floppy disk. <laughs> 
The boot sector is not directly accessible to us in the file manager, because it is a protected area that contains some important information of the file system itself. If we write there, we will destroy the file system, and all the files that were there are lost somewhere on that disk. This is why file managers can't let us do that. So we need a special utility, in our case, the dd command. So let's type dd, a sector will have 512 bytes. We will only write one sector. The input file is stage 1. And the output is the auxiliary image. And dd must not truncate the file to one sector. Lastly, we need to write the second stage right after the first one, so that means starting with sector 2. Type dd, bs equals 512, seek to sector 1, input file is stage 2. Output is the auxiliary image. And no truncation. Note that sectors are indexed starting from 0. We are done with the hard work of creating the two floppy images. The last step is to install Grub on the first floppy disk. Installation is necessary, because Grub knows how to write to that boot sector of the floppy disk in a non-destructive manner. To do this, let's open VirtualBox, and I will create a new virtual machine. The name doesn't matter, and neither does the operating system. I'll just set it to DOS, which will set up automatically the RAM memory size to 32 MB. This is really up to you, but we will definitely not need more than 32 MB of RAM. Maybe when we will have a graphical user interface, but there is a very long way to that point. We don't need a hard disk, at least not yet, so I will just disable it. Now let's go to settings for this machine, And in the storage tab, I will create a new floppy controller. And a floppy drive. We can start this machine, and let's mount the auxiliary floppy image we just created. We also need to restart the machine. Now we need to mount the other floppy image, my os.img. In the prompt type install, ft0 slash boot slash stage 1, which is the path of the first stage. ft0, which means that the root will be the floppy drive. ft0 slash boot slash stage 2 which is the path to the second stage. Finally the configuration file, ft0 slash boot, slash menu.cfg. If everything was set up correctly, after restarting the machine grub should show an error, saying that the file kernel.bin was not found. Before finishing, let's organize all the files a little bit. With this, we have finished setting up grub, now all that is left to do is creating our kernel. This is what we will cover in the next episode, how to create a kernel that does nothing, and also how to create a kernel that does something. See you next time.